Hi again. Let's continue exploring different constituents and how we can build rules that can explain the internal structure of our constituents. So let's say we have some noun phrases, maybe some noun phrases that look, that look like these. Harry, coppers, the coppers, spot, the spot, reason, the reason, and so forth. All those are possible noun phrases in English. However, you can probably see that there's a few regularities popping up in the data. We could make a rule that said a noun phrase is any of these. Harry, a noun phrase is coppers, a noun phrase is the coppers. But as you uh, are no doubt notice, noticing, this rule is not the most efficient one. We could add a few generalizations, such as the fact that noun phrases sometimes have a determiner, the word the, in, as in the coppers, the reasons, the parties, and sometimes noun phrases don't have a determiner. Let's try to make a rule to explain the structure of a noun phrase. How about this? A noun phrase is composed of a determiner and a noun. And then we have that determiners are the, the set of one element, which is the. And nouns are the set of five elements, Harry, Coppers, Spot, Reason, and Parties. This is a nice rule. It, uh, for example, we could have the Coppers, where the noun phrase is composed of the determiner the, and the noun Coppers. We could have the Parties where the noun phrase is made up of the determiner the and the noun parties. So this is good. However, there's still a few phrases that this uh, noun phrase would not capture. For example, if it saw the word Harry, it wouldn't think that it's a noun phrase because the only thing it recognizes as a noun phrase is a determiner, the, and a noun. So let's expand upon this rule and add another condition. Let's say a noun phrase is a determiner and a noun, or a noun. And we have, again, the determiner be the set of one element, the, and the noun be a set of five elements, Harry, Copper, Spot, Reason, Parties. As you can see, we can have two types of noun phrases according to these rules. We can have some noun phrases that are the determiner and noun, such as the coppers, the spot, the reason, and the parties. And there's another type of noun phrase, which is just noun, like Harry. And there's others that we could build like this, like parties or spot. So these uh, rules can describe the structure of a noun phrase in English, at least of, these, of this little toy set. Let's add something more to the equation. How about if a noun phrase can be three things? It can be a determiner followed by a noun, or a noun, or a pronoun. And we have the same set for the, the same set for noun, but we have a new element, pronoun, which has uh, one element in its set, and it's they. So now we would have three types of noun phrases. The determiner plus noun, the coppers, the spot. We have noun phrases that are just noun, like Harry, and we have noun phrases that are just a pronoun, like they. So all of these are noun phrases. They're just noun phrases with different internal structures. There's something important here. The ones that are in uh, lowercase here are called terminals. The, Harry, Coppers, they, and so forth. These are the actual words that we observe in the language, in the writing, in the speaking, and so forth. We call them terminals because, because they're the last point of the derivation. We're going to call the others non-terminals. The non-terminals are abstractions that help us support the explanation for why NPs can, be, uh, can have different configurations. So, for example, you have seen the word um, Harry in text. But no one has seen an NP in texts or, an, or just an abstract noun. What you see are specific instantiations of the object noun. 
what you see is an instantiation of noun, which is spot, an instantiation of the abstract object noun, which is reason. And if you uh, mount two abstractions, the determiner and the noun, you would have an instantiation of the abstract object noun phrase. So noun phrase, determiner, and noun are non-terminals because they are abstractions. The, Harry, coppers are terminals because they are the actual objects that we're dealing with. So you can see how we mount rules first with some non-terminals that help us explain the structure, and then we end up with our terminals. So how can we use any of this? We can use this to build parsing trees of our noun phrases, for example. So let's say you wanted to explain the structure of the phrase, the parties. How would you do it with these rules? We know that this is a noun phrase. So the first note that we need is the non-terminal NP or noun phrase, which is I'm going to have here and also here for diagram. Next, you need to select the kind of noun phrase that fits the phrase you want to parse. For example, the parties has two words, so it cannot just be a noun phrase composed of a noun, and it cannot be a noun phrase composed of a pronoun. Also, neither the nor parties are a pronoun. <laughs> so the parties is probably an NP composed of determiner and noun. So we go through that rule and select that the NP is determiner and noun. And now we need to go from these non-terminals to our actual terminals. Let's look at the determiner. Because the word that we have is the, and we do have that rule, we can have that, the determiner, go to the terminal the. We could repeat this and have the noun, this rule here, noun, go to the terminal parties. So look at what we have here. We have a noun phrase, which has a determiner, and a noun, this one here, and then the determiner has the terminal the, and the noun has the terminal parties. So we can use these rules to build a parsed structure of a noun phrase, so that a noun phrase has two components, and we know exactly what these components are. One of them is a determiner, the, and one of them is a noun, parties. We have seen these types of rules before. On week two, we called them context-free grammar rules. They're, um, they were rules such that one element on the left could go to a number of elements on the right. And for example, you need one determiner for one noun. Um, this is a type of rule called context grammar. And as you can see, uh, English sentences are mostly within this domain. This uh, theory that I'm showing you right now, by the way, was invented by Chomsky in 1957, this rule style. And it's the one that you're going to find in the Python implementation of parsing. They are called context-free because the, structure, the structures that you need to build an NP are determined within the NP. You don't need to look at a verb, for example, to know how your NP is going to be constructed. All the information for the NP lies within the NP. We are going to use context-free grammar rules for parsing. And a quick note, if you've taken Ling1, because right now you must be having a heart attack uh, telling me, wait, we're not using XBAR. We'll go into more detail later, but no. We're not going to use XBAR or principles and parameters or minimalism or anything more modern than 1960s and 70s uh, phrase grammar rules. Uh, the reason will come up in the next few videos. For the CS people, we're going to call these types of rules context-free grammar rules. In summary, we have constituents such as professor, the professor, pizza, pineapple pizza, the pineapple pizza, the delicious pineapple pizza. We have constituents, for example, noun phrases. We have rules 
for the internal structure of constituents. For example, constituents can be a determiner like the and a noun like pizza. We have rules that are expressed in terms of terminals, like the specific tokens or words, the and pizza, and, non, and rules that have non-terminals, such as um, noun phrase, determiner, noun, and so forth. These rules are context-free in that the explanation for what a noun phrase is is self-contained within uh, the noun phrase. And on the next video, we'll continue to build upon these structures. We're going to look at verb phrases and prepositional phrases and use them to try to build a whole parsed English sentence.